And welcome to our next segment of the show. And our guest is Kevin Lembo. Kevin? Yep. Welcome to the hour. Good to see you. Kevin is the State of Connecticut controller since January 5th, 2011. Correct. So you're a couple of years in already, Kevin, right? Feels like a couple of decades. <laughs> like some a days. Month, but it does. <laughs> and prior to that, Kevin was Connecticut's first healthcare advocate. And uh, prior to that, Connecticut's assistant controller. So, Kevin, let's do a little education of the audience first because. Uh, probably in the private sector, you would be called vice president of finance or chief financial officer. In the public sector, you are called a controller. Correct. Right? Okay. So what, give us a definition of what the state controller is and a couple of bullets on what your primary responsibilities are. Sure. So, so the comptroller, I think, as you're pointing out, isn't thought of uh, very often by most people. Right. Uh, but it is an independently elected constitutional officer. We've got six of them in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And my primary responsibilities are administering the state budget. So I pay the bills. I pay the employees. I administer the pension fund. I administer the health benefit and purchase it and, mm -hmm. and make sure it's administered properly. Um, but the, the job of fiscal guardian is really the one that gets the most attention because that's the one that puts me in the public eye talking about the budget and talking about the economy. Yeah, and I think that I, when I looked it up on the internet, I wanted to see what the internet had to say by way of a definition of you, Kevin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the definition of you is exactly what you just gave, the chief fiscal guardian. Right. And you're involved in all that stuff that you just, and the operative word that I picked up there was the budget. I mean, you're looking at that budget all the time, Kevin, right? A absolutely right. It's my job uh, to take the budget um, as it is passed and signed by the governor mm -hmm. and uh, not only administer it, but report out to the governor and to the people of Connecticut on the first of every month, letting them know where we are versus mm -hmm. what had been projected. Mm -hmm. So is spending higher than anticipated or is it lower? Is revenue higher or is it lower? Uh, because Connecticut has a, a very uh, structured uh, requirements around what the budget has to look like when it's passed and how we have to keep it in balance throughout the life of the okay. budget. We need to get into that. But first, I wanted to ask you uh, just, just to almost differentiate the, for, between the difference between line and staff, right? Um, when it comes to taxation, when it comes to spending, and when it comes to borrowing, mm -hmm. Are you in a position of authority to do any of that, or are you watching them do it, Kevin? Uh, general, uh, I watch them do it. You watch okay, them do so it. So the, the legislature and the governor approve this much of money for this thing and this much money for this thing, and they say this is how the revenue is going to come in, and then I watch that daily mm -hmm. sometimes, and certainly we report out monthly, as I've said. Uh, I do weigh in, uh, certainly when asked, mostly by the mm -hmm. legislature, um, or when it is necessary. Uh, to, to try to uh, make sure that our financial life um, is as responsible and transparent as it can okay, be. Okay, so you're, you, uh, let me coin a phrase here. You're, mm -hmm. the, you're the chief shine the light on it officer for the state. In other words, when, you watch, when you're watching the spending and when you're watching the expenditures of the budget, if you see something where you feel like it needs to be brought to the attention of the governor, the legislature, and even more importantly, the public, right you have the office authority to say so. And as an independently elected constitutional officer, I have the freedom to do that as well. Okay. So that, I don't have to worry about what the legislature may think of what I'm saying or what a governor, any governor, may think of what I'm saying. Okay, so even though you run on a ticket, right. it, and that's important, it's independently constitutional officer. That's right. For the okay. years we had a Republican governor and all under ticket Democrats. Right. So right. It, just, it just works out that way. Sometimes. So to whom do you report? I Kevin? report to the people of the state of Connecticut. You report to the people That's of right. the state of Connecticut. And every four years they get an opportunity to throw me out of, job, out of a job. That's really interesting. I bet you, in addition to shedding some light on what a controller is and does, I bet you most people would guess that you work for the governor. Uh, I think folks do think that. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they get us confused with the governor has a budget office of his own. Right. Legislature has a budget office of their own. Uh, so there are really three budget offices. Yeah, that, that's, uh, the governor's side, that's office of management and budget. Uh, policy and management. Policy right. and management. Right. And on the legislature side, that's fiscal analysis. Correct. That's okay. exactly right. All right. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> you directly report to the people. So my last question would be, what is influence, what influence, before we get into the guts of the matter with the state budget, Kevin, mm -hmm. what influence can you bring to the process, to the results, mm -hmm. what influence can you bring? So uh, the Comptroller in Connecticut also has very broad auditing authority um, and also access to data. 
mm -hmm. almost unlimited. Uh, so that we can go in and audit a function or audit an agency or just sort of look at spending patterns and you know, ask questions about that. And then if we find things that are wrong, traditionally yeah. wrong, we can turn those over to the auditors and they take care of all that. Um, but it really is, uh, the job is set up the way it is so that we can independently watch what's going on and, and try to influence Good public policy. So, for example, recently we projected, and we'll talk about it more yeah. later, a small budget surplus. Right. Um, but I also have felt the need to say, as we projected a budget surplus, that we need to do the responsible thing with that surplus, and that is to fill the rainy day fund. Right. Versus just finding another thing to spend it on. Right. Now, do this, there are state auditors, right? There are two state auditors. There are state auditors. Are they appointed? Uh, they are, yes. I believe they, they are. One's Republican, uh, one's Democrat. Always. And do they, they work for you, the, Kevin? No, they do not. They do not. They, Who do they work for? Uh, they are appointed by the legislature. Okay, so the legislature tells them, we want you to go audit over here, audit over there. Yeah, they, they, once they're appointed, they fall outside of the direct control of the legislature. They are meant to stand alone okay. as well. Okay, all right. So, just a quick recap. You are the chief, chief fiscal guardian for the state of Connecticut. You answer to the public as a constitutionally elected officer. And you bring influence and leverage by shining the light on what is going on, essentially, right? In so we addition know what's to going. pulling those levers that we talked about, the levers paying the bills about. and all of those. Okay, so let's talk about the state's financial uh, status. Sure. Um, I would really appreciate, Kevin, if you would give me the opportunity to editorialize here. <laughs> it's your show, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, as someone with with 35 years of senior executive business experience, and a lot of public sector experience as well. I mean, I recognize the difference between the two sectors, but fundamentally, Kevin, there is an equation. You and I would put in the category of 101, maybe even 99A, and the equation is revenue equals expenses. And it doesn't take a rocket science scientist, all right, to understand that more revenue equals profit or Surplus, mm -hmm. profit in the private sector, surplus in the public sector, right. if you have more revenue than expenses. Uh, if there is less revenue or more expenses, you got a loss or you got a deficit. That's right. All right. To, I'm a simple man, Kevin. To me, that fundamental equation, I literally, and I probably am speaking on behalf of 95% of the people in Connecticut, I simply don't understand why the the state of Connecticut, its legislature, its gubernatorial office, et cetera, why there seems to be, seems to be, a fundamental misunderstanding of keeping that equation in balance. Am I right or am I wrong? Well, a couple of things on that. Okay. So, um, th because of the the laws that exist around the budget, you know, we have a cap on appropriations. We have a cap on borrowing. Uh, those were all put in place when the legislature passed the income tax back in the early '90s. It was a constitutional amendment. Correct. And then there were other pieces that were adopted through through legislation. Um, those sort of control, in one way or another, sort of what's going to happen around borrowing and around spending. Um, but whenever the budget falls more than 1% out of balance, on a month-to-month -month basis, mid-year, mm -hmm. they have to make adjustments, they, the legislature, and the governor, mm -hmm. to bring the budget back into balance. Yeah, let, let's, let's, give me an interrupt. let's quantify that. Our budget's about $20 billion, $20 billion dollars, right? That's so 10% right. will be $2 billion and... $200 $200 million. $200 million. Okay. Around. So, all right, once the deficit shows $200 million, plus or minus, you were saying? Then I say to the governor, officially, your budget has fallen out of balance you by more say, than 1%, and my statement to him triggers the mandate that they come in and they mitigate that. 